Hi everyone, it's Jay. It's just me for today. Um, so welcome to another episode in our Eczema series. And for today's episode, we're going to discuss, well, I'm going to discuss some of the diets that you can explore if you are an eczema sufferer. So well, all these diets, I've already tried myself. And I'm just going to go through it one by one and after I'm gonna share with you the diet that I am currently having and some learnings I guess and takeaways. So yeah, uh, let's start. So first is vegan diet. I know all of you already know what this is but basically it's a plant-based diet that avoids the consumption of all animals and all animal byproducts. So that means no eating of meat, dairy, eggs, etc. So what are the advantages of a vegan diet? So this is so this diet consumes whole foods, which is basically the opposite of processed foods. So if you eat whole foods, um, it means hindi siya dumaan masyado sa refinements or processing. So with that being said, you kind of eliminate instantly other common eczema triggers. So yung mga additives, um, na nandun, chemicals na nandun sa mga processed foods, wala ka agad, di ba? And if you go on a vegan diet, also, yun nga, you eliminate dairy and eggs, which are also common eczema triggers. And then, second one, the, uh, the other advantage is that vegetables and fruits are natural antioxidants. So, with a vegan diet, you kind of give yourself uh, and your body a favor and kind of detoxify na kaagad with the kind of food that you eat. The only um, disadvantage when it comes to having a vegan diet is that there is a possibility of eliminating um, other f- nutrients that the body needs so that um, those are vitamin vitamin B12, iron, calcium, vitamin D, omega-3, zinc, iodine, and probably there are other th- other more. But I would like just to, I would just like to say that um, I am in the, I believe na pwede mo siyang these nutrients that I've mentioned I think you can still find them in vegetables and fruits you just really have to read up and research what are the substitute like what substitute vegetables have uh, which are rich in protein which are rich in omega 3 mga um, bagay I think I really believe that the plant-based diet or a a vegetable a vegan diet is already complete in itself. Kailangan lang talaga ang hanapin kung ano yung yung rich in so and so stuff. Ayan. And then another disadvantage is that in this in our country kasi syempre vegan diet isn't as widespread yet. Um pati yeah, when it comes to accessibility, it's probably it can be a problem, since yeah, um, mas meat based pa rin yung diet here, and um, if you're not always out, and if you're not preparing your own meals, ang hirap nand kasi you don't know what what ingredients or what yeah what ingredients people put into the food so you can't really monitor that and also um vegan diet is also in the more you know um how do you say it higher end <laughs> when you um like compared to the ordinary diet so merending affordability factor it can be a little more expensive than your regular diet so yeah that's vegan and then gluten free diet so what is gluten gluten tiba parang it's like it's a word that just came out of nowhere that emerged like in the last i don't know 10 years or even less nung bata tayo tiba parang ano yun parang wala namang wala namang gluten nung panahon natin nung bata ako at least tiba well hindi siya hindi siya word <laughs> or hindi pa siya uso or whatever so yeah, gluten free like gluten. In gluten, this is the definition. Uh, it's a general name for proteins found in wheat, rye, barley, etc. And it helps food maintain their shape, acting as a glue that f- holds food together. So how? Why is this harmful for 
eczema sufferers? Well, I don't have the scientific uh, facts or I can be I can provide any science sciencey explanation about it. Pero um, the layman explanation is that gluten is inflammatory to some people, just like how dairy and eggs and other triggers are inflammatory to other people. So ganun lang. Um, gluten can be inflammatory. So if you think that this is a possible trigger, then you have to avoid the food that contains gluten. So those are like normally they are wheat, barley, rye, bread, pasta, cereals, beer, yan. Diba? Yan. Siguro in everyday life, bread and pasta and beer, kung ano ka, kung ma- and cereals. Kung yun yung ano, madalas mong kainin, you just really have to think if they are, uh, they contribute to your symptoms. And then, elimination diet. Um, elimination diet, basically, we've discussed this before in the first episode. It's just taking out the food that you think are triggers. So, um, if you think, um, let's say, chocolates is a trigger, then you eliminate it for a while, for two to three weeks, and just reintroduce it after, and then observe after two days um, if it creates a reaction sa katawan mo, sa skin mo. So that's how elimination diet goes. Um, I did elimination diet before and still, I still do elimination diet. I'm showing here right now is my, is the result of my food intolerance test that I got two years ago. Um, the good thing about food intolerance test is hindi ka nang huhula kung ano yung possible triggers. Some doctors would say na, you know, it's not worth it taking a food intolerance test because it changes, it, your body changes, which is true. It does change, it will change. Um, but yun nga, I thought that it's still a good thing to have kasi hindi ako mang huhula. And it's the it's, food that you regularly eat that your f- that your body will become intoler- intolerable to. Kasi syempre, like, like, in everyday life, what, what you're exposed to, regularly, persistently, yun yung magiging, ano ka, irritable ka, ir- um, or intolerable to, diba, kung dun ka lagi exposed. Ganun din sa food, if you eat something uh, in an excessive amount, di magiging intolerable yung katawan mo dun. Um, so, yun, uh, I really have to know it for sure. Parang nahirapan na akong manghula. So, I did the food intolerance test. Um, I did this with life science. It was in BGC before, but I think they um, went full on, uh, like, they went online na because of the pandemic. So, you can just check out Siguro Clinics that offered this one. So, here you can see, like, in the left side of the screen, this is the result na naka-categorized by food group. So, you can see dairy and egg, grains, grains, gluten-free fruit. Mahaba pa ito, mga three pages to eh. Like, meron na vegetables, meat, um, other things. And then, the right side is the file that is categorized into groups na kung ano talaga yung um, elevated, borderline, and normal food. So, elevated food are those na parang yun talaga yung hindi ako intolerant na talaga ako. And then, borderline yung alanganin, syempre. And then, normal food is the food that I can still eat. Like, normally, in a normal basis. Yan. So yun, um, here lumabas na sa borderline food, lumabas na, eh, sa elevated food lumabas na yung rice actually is in, ano na pala ako, hindi na matolerate ng katawan ko, which is, no, I wasn't surprised about because ang lakas ko kumain ng no rice. Um, lumabas din yung milk, um, which is, I wasn't drinking a lot. I wasn't drinking dairy, I wasn't taking in dairy, pero lumabas pa rin siya intolerable. So, it means na talagang ayaw siya ng katawan ko, I guess. Tapos, ayan, tapos sa borderline food, you can see squash, which is, I, at during that time, sobrang lakas kong kumain ng kalabasa. So, ayun, so inuwasan ko lahat ng nasa elevated and nasa, lahat ng nasa borderline food for three months. And then, eventually, pwede ko siyang i-reintroduce, pero 
until now, sa 2018, eh, 2019 ko tatanig, until now, hindi pa rin ko makain ng kalabasa. Um, tapos yung rice, medyo na reintroduce ko na, like, once in a while, I eat rice, pero nasanay na talaga akong walang rice, so hindi ko na siya hinahanap na kahit na rice's life, natuto talaga akong hindi siya hanapin, so, which is a good thing. Yeah, so, I encourage you, if you have the budget naman, you you can take food intolerance test just so to, you know, eliminate the guessing game. Mas madali talaga kung alam mo yung kailangan mong alisin sa diet. Tapos na yun, sunod, l- low sugar diet. Like, we've said then this the first episode, it's sugar is really inflammatory and it's not really, you know, alin yun na yan, sugar can cause a lot of disease and hindi lang eczema too much sugar is really not good for you and when it comes to eczema yun nga, you have to really have a low sugar diet so avoid sugary food and you have to really monitor your sugar intake so for me um, my nutritionist says I'm not sure if this is applicable to all females or if parang merong BMI factor pero ako ang advice sa akin ng nutritionist ko nun is to have like limit my f- sugar intake to 25 grams a day so ayun so I really have to watch out yung mga snacks ko especially if how much sugar they they have para hindi ako mag over 25 grams so what you can see here is parang three examples of my like usual go to snacks noon um, so we have here yung pinaka uh, so we have here the wait lang, ano ba to? Go, goji berries and then the cacao nibs and then the banana chips so you can see here in in circle ko yung mga sugar um, sugar content nila so yung goji berries has 4.24 grams and then it says and above serving size 1 tablespoon so isang serving niya is one tablespoon so if i have six table yeah if i have six tablespoons of this one naka 24 grams na kaagad ako hindi na ako hindi ko na hindi na ako pwede kumain ng other sugary stuff kasi kompleto na ako for a day so ganun so kailangan kong siguro ito mga dalawa lang para makakain pa ako ng ibang sugary food and then um when it comes to cacao nibs the same thing for grams and then when it comes to the banana chips, it's 8 grams and sobrang taas. And when we say, and when we look at the one in the middle and the one at the right, most, eh, at the right, um, tayo dito, diba yung serving size niya medyo ang hirap i-imagine, like serving size 10 grams, serving size 25 grams, parang ano yun, di ko talaga magets. Um, <laughs> tapos then, ano yari sa ganyan kasi, Ako personally, di ko din naman talaga, di, di ko siya ma-imagine. So anyway, ang ginagawa ko na lang is that pag bumibili ako ng food na for snacks or anything, titingnan ko na lang yung lowest sugar um, sugar level. So kung makakita ko ng may 2 grams, 1 gram, even 0, yun, I go for that na lang. Kasi at least if I end up binge eating, hindi, like, the sugar intake isn't, wouldn't go overboard kahit na nag-binge it, binge eat ako. So, ganun na lang. Uh, yun na lang advice ko is that you just really go for the sugar, sugar level na talagang mababa. So, kawari yung banana chips na ko na yan na sugar, ang sugar level niya ay 8 grams per serving. Hindi ko na yung kinakain. <laughs> Ibang banana chips na yung kinakain ko yung wala ng sugar um, level. So, yun. So, just really um, monitor your sugar intake. Um, learn to l- read the labels. Make it a habit. Ayan. And then, lastly, mitochondrial diet. So, what is this? It consists of meal plan meal plans that provide nutrients for the mitochondria. So, those foods which are high in fo- phytonutrients, protein, omega-3, healthy fats, are good to support the mitochondria. So, what is mitochondria? <laughs> Napaka, ano, ano natin, no? Science-y. Okay, mitochondria 
as you've all learned in the elementary days, is the powerhouse of the cell. So it converts the chemical energy from the food we eat into energy that the cell can use. So how is this helpful to the skin? Kasi, well, ito na lang. So yung, kung yung mitochondria ay ang nag help mag-convert ng, ng chemical energy sa food that we eat, siya yung nag-optimize ng nutrition natin. So, kailangan natin support siya para ma-maximize lahat ng mga kinakain natin at makuha lahat ng nutrients na nandun. So, if we um, support the mitochondria, kind of domino effect na to the whole system natin because mitochondria um, supports the cell and the cells, again, class, ano yung cells? <laughs> are the building blocks of our body, diba? So, yeah, so it's kind of, you kind of just really help your overall health if you support the my, your mitochondria. And there are a lot of studies that says that mito, <clears throat> excuse me, mitochondria rejuvenates your skin. And it just, Marami yung studies say eh, mitochondria um, helps how mitochondria diet or supporting mitochondria helps with, you know, anti-aging and stuff like that. You can research that. It's really backed up, I think, by a lot of research. And then, yeah, it improves overall health kasi nga, it's, it's about the cells. Um, and ang maganda sa mitochondria diet, it's... Um, you kind of make uh like it's a kind of it's a diet that makes you parang apply a preventive measure you kind of support your overall health and when you do syempre ano na rin yan, the skin follows diba and let's just also emphasize that i know um, skin is the largest organ in the body, so you really have to um, tawo dito, make the cells work, you know, function well, kasi for it to really um, support the organ, the largest organ of the body. So, yan. Um, so, what diet do I have right now? It's actually the combination of all the diets I've mentioned. Parang through the years, um, I think I'm I think it's my ninth year having eczema and throughout the years I've learned to you know I've I've done each of this one um means and there was a year na vegan talaga ako and then all others in um di talaga kumain ng meat ganyan, ganyan. so anyway um what I'm trying to say is that um throughout the years that I've had this I've learned yung kung ano, what works for me and I've kind of adopted the things that are are good in each of the diets na yun nga, na I think works for me. So when it say vegan, ayan, marami ko pa rin kumain ng vegetables every time. All, all of my meals, kailangan merong may vegetables as much as I can. Um, and then I don't still eat dairy and eggs and and then I, I still avoid gluten. All my I don't eat bread. I don't eat pasta. Um, all my snacks are gluten free. Yeah. And then low sugar diet. Yung yan nasabi ko sa inyo. I up I read the labels and just really avoid um, food that are high in sugar. And then from time to time I still eliminate. Um, food triggers, uh, I mean food that I think are triggers and then just reintroduce them after a while just to see if they are really really a culprit. And then I do mitochondria because I eat ano na ngayon, pork and chicken just so I have more energy and I can provide more support dun nga sa mitochondria ko. So it's really a combination of all because I think yun nga, um, all of them have value sa akin. Um, so, I combine what are the best from each of these diets. So, yun. Um, I guess my takeaway is that you really just to ha- un- you just really have to understand your body. Like what we said in the previous episode, you really have to know what your triggers are. And if you understand your body and how, how it reacts to food you eat, 
we go to number two. You can customize your diet according to what your body needs. So, if you know your triggers, if you know, if you understand your body, then you you can explore diets, tiba. You can um, parang you can, uh, you have more freedom to to eat, and you you don't restrict yourself to one diet. Ang hirap nung tiba yung pagkare iisang diet lang yung sinusundan mo. So at least if you understand your body, you can do what I did. Na parang I just get the good stuff in all of all of those diets, and then put them all together to something na that works for me. Yeah, so you need not restrict yourself to one type of diet. And then three, eat healthy. Very basic, but it is, um, I guess we're gonna be repeating this over and over again in throughout the series because it is really important to eat healthy. So, kahit na, let's say, we go back to number two, you can customize your diet and all that. Still, uh, siguro non-negotiable ang not eating junk foods, not eating processed foods. Yun talaga, hindi mo talaga yun. Hindi <laughs> mo, di, di pwede yung pag nag-customize ka, ilalagay mo yun. I, I don't think so. Um, those are the things na hindi talaga pwede. So, it just you just really have to eat healthy. And as my nutritionist says, um, eat a rainbow. which By which she means, pag kumakain ka, mas maganda na maraming kulay yan. Kasi... Kung maraming kulay, it means maraming nutrients. So, just um, just eat as much as you can. I mean, orange, orange vegetables, green vegetables, purple, ano pa ba? Maraming kulay yan. And then, meat or brown. So, meat or uh, and then grains are brown. So, ayun, if you, pag, yun yung measure ko actually for myself. Pag nakita ko sa sa dinner, sa lunch, na ay ang kulay ng ano ko, ng, <laughs> ng kinakain ko, I feel so good about it. Kasi parang feeling ko, ah, ang nutritious ng ano ko, kinakain ko, pag ang kulay-kulay ng kinakain ko. Kasi it means na talagang nakukuha mo yung nutrition from each of these food groups. Ayan. And then, for read food label. So, just make it a habit talaga. Um, hindi na pwedeng yung kuha ka nang nangkuha sa grocery. Um, siguro nung kabataan mo, pwede pa yan. Pero ngayon, meron ka ng eczema. Or even ngayon, kung may eczema ka, tas kabata ka pa rin, eh, careful ka talaga sa mga pagkukuha-kuha mo lang ng randomly sa grocery. You really need to read the labels already. And ako, actually, hindi na ako nakakapag-grocery sa um normal grocery i mean most of my snacks talaga sa healthy options ko na binibili um pwede na akong maging ambassador ng healthy options and i sponsor nila ako someday <laughs> anyway hindi. um yan so yan just really read the labels yan and then lastly be consistent also like yung sa be, uh, eat healthy, being consistent, I think I'm gonna repeat this over and over throughout the series, you really have to be consistent. So, um, kung ano yung diet mo na put in place, you really have to stick to it. And, hindi ka pwedeng bumalik sa dati. Like, if gumaling ka ngayon, ibabalik mo yung dating diet mo. Hindi, hindi talaga, it doesn't really work that way if you have eczema because eczema is a chronic and recurring condition. So, you really have to stick to it or else, babalik at babalik siya. So, if you don't want it to go back, you really have to be consistent and just to really stick to your diet. Ako, pag ako may temptation na pagkain or something, I, I guess you just really have to ask yourself, mas gusto ko bang maganda ako bukas <laughs> or gusto kong masatisfy yung appetite ko right now. Siyempre, ang sagot ko, gusto kong maganda ako bukas. Diba? So, you just have to um, choose ko ano yung mas important sa'yo. So, yeah. Especially me, kasi ako pag nagka-flare sa ko, it takes about a week before it subsides. So, talagang ano yun, sugal kung chinus kong to satisfy my appetite and my craving. So, yun. So, you just really have to choose. <laughs> um, so, that's it. Um, I hope you got something, um, a thing or two with all these 
diets and some learnings that I have throughout the years. So yeah, um, I'll see you in the next XMA series. Bye!